Hello again, this is Katrina Kromlich with Inspired Spectrums and in this video we're going to talk about working on your students' goals. So we are only going to work on goals when your child is highly motivated. So definitely not when they're exclusive, definitely not when you just first walked into the room. Um, first you want to get them playing, first you want to get them excited, first you want to get them engaged with you. And then once you have that, that's when you're going to work on a social goal. So to start with, you know, eventually we're going to learn more about your student and, and pick some pretty specific goals. But to start with, you're just going to pay attention to what your child is already doing. And you're just going to add to there. So the, the four areas that we tend to work on are all about social interaction. So we think about eye contact, communication, attention span, and flexibility. So when you're working with your child, you just want to pick one of those things, and, and literally just one, you know, um, each session you might want to pick one, or you can divide it for per game, which one you're going to work on. But you're not going to work on all four things at once, and you're not going to try to um, change it up in the middle. Just pick one thing and stick with it the whole time you're playing with your student for that interaction. So let's say you want to work on communication, you know, so you'd first of all get your child into a game. So let's play your tickle game. You're having fun. You tickled yourself. You Then you started tickling them and they're excited and now you're going back and forth and you're saying tickle and then you move away, tickle and then you move away and then finally they're excited. They want more tickles. They're giggling. They're looking at you. So you say, you say tickle and then you wait. the waiting sometimes you don't even have to ask well you just have to like back away and wait each child is different so part of this is learning about what's going to work best for your student but that's where it is then once they're so excited they really want that tickle you're going to see that they're going to come out with so much more than they ever would have before because their brains are primed they're ready they're really wanting this so those connections are going to happen much faster and that's why we wait for them to be highly motivated so once they're really wanting that tickle and you say you say tickle you're gonna get ah! and whatever they say you're gonna be excited about that and you're gonna cheer them on because maybe they think they actually said it so you want to keep supporting that and eventually we can get it clearer and we can get it um, you know more concise or whatever that may be but you want to celebrate anything they give you even if they breathe loudly <sighs> You know, you want to celebrate that because what we pay attention to grows stronger. So you want to celebrate all these attempts they're making towards whatever it is to keep them inspired and to keep them strong. So that's pretty much it. If you're working on eye contact, you know, look at me and I'll, and I'll give you a tickle. If you're working on, you know, them letting you wear hats, if it's like a flexibility thing, sometimes kids won't let you do certain things. So maybe you try putting on a hat after they're really excited about the tickle, then it's a bear tickle, or you do different types of tickle to try to vary it. When you're working on attention span, you know, that's just keeping them in the game longer. So how, what else can we do to keep this game going longer? And sometimes it might be as simple as that. That might be the request. Um, we're gonna get we're gonna go more into that down the road after you guys have had some time to practice this stuff so at first I really just want you to focus on having fun the more fun you have the more fun your child is going to have and the more you believe in your students capabilities and potentials to learn and to grow the more they're going to believe in themselves. So a big part of requesting is giving them the opportunity to show them the, what you already know. You already know they can do this. And when you believe in them, they'll believe in themselves. And then you're going to see this stuff happen, happen faster. So have fun. Give them these opportunities. Keep celebrating them. Keep cheering them on. And keep it low pressure. You know, your relationship with them is your most important goal. So out of all of this stuff, it doesn't necessarily need to be more eye contact or more words. It's really about you and them having fun together. So if you're finding the request is actually sort of detracting from your guys' experience and relationship, if, the, if you're peppering them too much with questions, you might want to back off, you know, and then just have more fun and relax because these kids are going to learn and grow no matter what. The requesting sort of pushes it a little bit. Um, but just playing together and being engaged is so helpful for these kids. It really is. So that being said, there's so many ways to request. I'm going to leave that up to you guys for now to, to practice with and to experiment because each child is so different. 
and we'll get into more specifics later on. But um, like I said, have fun, keep believing, keep giving them opportunities, and keep celebrating them for anything they do. And break it down into s smaller steps if you need to. You know, if your child can't say tickle right away, then maybe you just work on t or t or h. <laughs> Break it down so that they can understand it and keep it simple and just keep moving on from there. So, have fun!